Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 2-3 of May, June 2022 for Ad Math. Now let's move on to questions number one. Uh, let's see what do we have over here. So here we have to solve this modulus um, question. So uh, there's obviously uh, two ways of solving this question. One is we can square both sides and then uh, simplify, find the values of x. Uh, and second way is we can just simplify step by step and see what happens, right? So here we have this. We can send this one over here, right? That will be what? 4 here. 7x minus 3. That will be 9 plus 5 will be uh, 14. And then we have 4 here. We can send this over here by dividing by 4 on both sides. Let's see what will happen. That will become 14 over 4, which is 7 over 2. Which is what? Which is a uh, 3.5, right? Again, you can always use your calculator here. It is a uh, add math paper, so you can use your calculator. There should not be any issue. Now, once we have this, once we have this equation, which is a uh, modulus of 7x minus 3 equal to 3.5, we can break this down into two parts. One will be 7x minus 3 is equal to 3.5 or 7x minus 3 is equal to minus 3.5. Okay, so now we can solve for the value of x. So 7x will be what? Will be, we'll send this one over here, become 6.5, and x becomes 6.5 divided by 7. And here 7x become minus 3.5 plus 3 becomes minus 0 0.5, and x becomes minus 0 0.5 divided by 7. You can simplify if you want to using your uh, calculator. So 6.5 divided by 7, that will be 13 over 14. Okay, something more, uh, more presentable. And this one is 0 0.5 divided by 7, that should be uh, minus 1 over 14. So these will be the two values of x, this and this. This is obviously one of the methods of, of solving this equation. The other way will be to expand, uh, sorry, is, is, is to square both sides. You can always apply square here and square here, and then solve by using your formula, which is um, the quadratic formula, or you can use a factorization to find the values as shown right here. So this is your question number one. Now, question number two, uh, do not use a calculator. Obviously, you can use one if you want to. No one is watching you. But the point is, we have to show every step along the way of solving this question. Now, here we have x and y are related by this equation. So we have this is as the main equation, where x is given to you by this and y is given to you by this. We have to find the value of k, giving you answers in the form of this, where a, b, and c are integers. So what are integers? Integers are whole numbers, which is minus 1, 1, stuff like that. It can be negative or positive, but has to be whole numbers. Okay, so by observing this, how would you find the value of k, you would say? From what I can see, I can make k become subject by dividing by x squared on both sides, so you will have y over x squared. So this is how you will find k. Take y, divide by x squared. So let's first find x squared. So x squared is what? will be this, 1 plus root of 2 square, that will be 1, plus uh, 2, 2, and plus 2. That should be 3 plus 2 root 2. Now, obviously, let's try to solve this. So from what we can see, k is equal to y, y is 1 minus this, divided by x squared is this one. Right. Now, obviously, how do we simplify this? We have seen this many times by now. We have to multiply the base and the top by its conjugate. So 3, change this sign to minus this, and change this sign to this. So we have to multiply top and bottom by, its, by, the, by this one's conjugate. Now let's see what happens. So one by one. So on top you have uh, to take one. So let's, let me write this down first. You will have this, multiply by this right and then on the base you will have this multiply by this one so now we just have to simplify one by one mm, so for this one how would you expand this you can take one times this 
that will be same thing right and then minus root 2 times this you will have minus 3 root 2 and then plus 2 times 2 because uh, minus root 2 times minus 2 root 2 so minus minus will cancel out 2 root 2 times 2 will become uh, so root 2 times root 2 becomes 2 so 2 times 2 will be 4 so that will be the top not for the bottom let's see what happens now we know this from uh, I think we learned this a long time ago this is basically the uh, difference of squares so when you have a plus b times a minus b we know that will be a square minus b square right we have learned this before I I really believe so so a square will be from what you can see that will be 3 square minus b square will be 4 times 2 that should be 1 right so 9 minus 8 will be 1 so let's simplify uh, this one let's see what happens so you will have 3 plus 4 that should be 7 minus 2 minus 3 should be minus 5 root 2 and that will be your value of k where you can see by comparing as well this will be a this b will be minus 5 and c will be 2 and all these values are whole numbers they are integers and that will be your value of k now let's move on to question number three not seven three uh, the points a and b a and b and c right we have three points have coordinates 2 6 6 1 and pq so let's write this down in this way we have a is 2 6 we have b 6 1 and c which is pq we don't know that yet now given that b is a midpoint of ac so now okay we have this information we kind of know what to do so how do you find the midpoint of ac you would say okay to find the midpoint of a and c so the midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2 so 2 plus p and then y else, of course divide by 2 and then y1 plus y2 divide by 2 so this we know it equals to what b is the midpoint so b is 6 and 1 so we will solve this by comparison so how do you do this we compare this and this so we know from what we can see 6 is supposed to be 2 plus p over 2 now let's solve for this value of p cross multiply you will have 12 here is equal to 2 plus p so p have to be the value of 10 okay now same one this one is equal to 1 so 6 plus q over 2 is 1 so 1 is obviously 1 over 1 and then cross multiply you will have 6 plus q has to be 2 so q has to be 2 minus 6 which is minus 4 so once we have this we know uh, the point c is actually p is 10 and q is minus 4 right so now we have the point C. Uh, we have to find the equation of the line that passes through C. So C will be a passing point and is perpendicular to AB. Okay, pretty easy. So how do you find the equation of a line? So to find the equation of a line, we need to find its gradient. So how do you find the gradient of this line which passes through C? We understand that this line is perpendicular to AB. So if it is perpendicular, we can use the relationship between the two lines. For example, let's first find the gradient of AB. So the gradient of AB is given to you by what? So we know this is a formula we use, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That should be minus 5 over the value of, of 4. Right. Now, Obviously, from this, we can derive the gradient of the line passing through C because it is perpendicular. So the gradient will be, we have the reciprocal, but the, we will have to apply negative sign. So you become positive with 4 over 5. So that makes sense. So the gradient of the line multiplied by the gradient of AB is supposed to give you minus 1. So this is the relationship you have between this line and this line because it is perpendicular. Now we know this value, replace this right here, find this one, you will have this as the answer. Now, since you have this, you have the passing point, you can find the equation pretty easily. This is the x value, 
this is the y value so the equation will be y minus its corresponding value over x minus its corresponding value will be the gradient which is this then we just have to cross multiply you will have so 5y plus 20 is equal to 4x minus 40. So 5y is equal to 4x minus 60. So you have to express, uh, give your answer in this form where ax plus by equal to c. So send this over here, you will have minus 4x plus 5y is equal to minus 60. So it will be in this form. Right, so bear A, B, and C are integers, so integers are whole numbers, confirm right here by this equation as well. Uh, that will be your question uh, number three. So the main point here was to know when we say one line is perpendicular to the other line, we have to know this relationship. If you take their gradients, multiply them by each other, you will have minus one. So this is the main point of this question, but also this one, we have to know how to find the midpoint uh, between two points, and then use that to find the missing values, so on and so forth. That is your question number three. Now let's move on to question number four. So here we have to find the range of values of x satisfying this equation. So it should be pretty easy as well. So as we have seen before, we, have, we first have to find these critical values. To find the critical values, we have to equate the same equation to zero. That will be x is equal to one over five, x equal to six. So these two are the critical values. Right, you have this, and then this is the line of zero. Now, if you were to expand this, so 5x times minus x, you will have minus 5x squared. Now, obviously, if you expand this, that will be a quadratic function. Since the coefficient of x squared is negative, we understand that it will be a maximum curve, right? The shape will be something like this. And the points where they meet are the critical values. This is the point, 1 over 5, and this is 6. Now, according to the question, what are we looking for? For it to be less than 0, so less than 0 will be this side below the line. So you can see 0 is here, less than 0 will be here, will be this part and this part. So this is only true when x is less than 1 over 5, and when x is more than, more than 6. So this will be the range of values of x, where our inequality will be satisfied. Now let's move on to part B of your question. So here we have to show that this equation where k is not equal to minus half has distinct, so not the same, distinct mean uh, different real roots, so more than one root, two roots. Uh, let's see. So this is obviously a, right? This is b, and this is c. So b squared minus 4ac. So b squared will be minus 4k squared minus 4 times a, which is 2k plus 1, and times c will be 2k minus 1. Now we have to simplify, obviously. This will be 16k squared minus 4 times what? This will become 2k so let me, uh, again, it's the same thing as before, right? So let me, you can obviously expand one by one, uh, your preference. Uh, okay, well, let's do that because uh, we want to make your life easy. So why not? Let's do that. So you will have 2k plus 1, 2k minus 1. That will be what? This is a plus b times a minus b, which is the difference of squares, as we have seen before, which is 2k square minus one square, that will be 4k square minus one. So this whole thing here will become 4k square minus one. So let's expand, let's see what happens. So here we have 16k square minus four times 4k square minus one. Right, so what's gonna happen now? Let's expand, you will have 16, k square minus 16 k square plus 1. So this and this will cancel out, as you can see. So hence, I can confirm that b square minus 4 ac, we will have 1 remaining, right? So 1 is obviously a positive value. Uh, by this, we confirm that it is more than 
0. So hence we confirm that it has distinct and real roots. So we have to show this to confirm that. Now let's move on to question number 5. So I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.